The Irish Whale and Dolphin Group is investigating what it describes as the unusual beaching of three dead whales off the west coast. The latest whale washed ashore on a beach in County Sligo. It's not too unusual to see a dead whale washed up on a beach in the west of Ireland, but in a little over a week, one dead sperm whale was spotted a good distance out to sea, and three have beached in Donegal, Galway and now Sligo. This has never happened before uh, in, such, in such a short space of time. Uh, so we're up here uh, today to try and get an understanding of this particular whale that washed up in the street. The whale is about 12 metres long and believed to be female, which in itself is unusual. Typically we have males up this far north in the Atlantic. Uh, females tend to hang around in uh, warmer waters at lower latitudes, uh, down around the likes of the Azores and Madeira off Portugal. Um, so if we do have females around here, then it could be a change in the water. An examination of one of the whale's stomachs showed no evidence of any plastic having been ingested, but there's no time now to examine the other three stomachs. An unusual spike in marine life deaths. One day alone this week, eight beached animals washed up on Long Island's north and south forks. The data is important. Uh, already, these numbers have what, like, almost tripled. Yeah, it looks, it looks like uh, we're three times what our numbers were for this time last year. So we're at, we're at 63 animals that we have responded to uh, that have washed up dead on our beaches. Since January the 1st, there is uh, a number of 1,100 dolphins that have been found dead on the French shore. This uh, number is a record, uh, the highest number since the past 40 years. Um, but we've seen an increase in this bycatch for the past three years. And right now it's such an alarming rate that the scientists estimate that it can drive the dolphin population to extinction. Scientists wanting some answers tonight after two whales wash. After two huge whales wash up on the same shoreline. This pair marked the second and third dead gray whales found in the bay in the past two years. There is a growing worry among biologists that this is a marker, a sign of the environment in Alaska changing and endangering the whales. It has to be a concern for us. I think it has to be an early warning that Perhaps something's changing drastically in their habitat in the north, in the Arctic waters, that they're not getting enough food. A dead whale washed ashore on a Balibu beach, and it is getting a whole lot of attention. People soaking up sun and surfers riding waves surprised at what they saw. I'm an England boy, so you don't often get these things in the UK. I've never really seen it like that close. I'm glad people are seeing it. It washed up around 3 o'clock this morning and didn't take long for curious beachgoers to pull out cell phones, snapping pictures of a dead whale, giving off a strong odor. A dead gray whale was found washed up along an East Bay shoreline this morning. Spectators gathered along the shore in San Pablo Bay in Rodeo. It's created quite a stir here in town because in Rodeo, they don't often see whales. A young gray whale. The cause of his death at the moment is unknown. And floating just a few feet offshore, it is easy to see. Now a look at the mounting toll taken by the ongoing flooding across the Midwestern United States. Nebraska's governor characterizing the destruction as unbelievable. Look at this highway cracked in half. And this is what's left of the Spencer Dam after being destroyed by the roaring water. Record high rivers turn small Midwest towns into islands. In Nebraska, flood water rendered roads and entire highway routes impassable. 
For farmers across Nebraska and Iowa, the record floods have been especially devastating, with many losing much of their livestock and last year's harvest. But it's not next year that forecasters are concerned about, but the coming weeks. The flooding is expected to become worse, more widespread and record-breaking. In fact, the U.S.'s National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is warning that nearly two-thirds of the mainland USA faces an elevated risk of flooding until May. 200 million people are at risk of flooding in their communities, with some 13 million people potentially experiencing major unprecedented flooding. Rain and significant snow melt fueled this disaster, the worst the region has seen in decades. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois also hit hard. In Nebraska, the damage to the state's livestock sector alone is projected to be 400 million. On Thursday, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, released a report forecasting a potentially unprecedented flood season in the current year. But scientists also say this is the latest manifestation of a changing climate. Some researchers say, as with the rest of the world, large areas of the U.S. may soon become uninhabitable as a result of the changing climate, and not just coastal regions, but areas deep inland. Iranian pictures of the floods show the extent of the damage. Cars washed away, roads blocked, trees submerged and water waist deep. The floods hit during Iran's New Year holidays and that means that many aid workers are away from home, slowing response efforts. Iran's energy minister has blamed climate change for the unprecedented floods. The amount of precipitation is unprecedented. For until last year, Iran was suffering from decades of drought drastic weather changes. Various provinces have been devastated by more than two weeks of near constant rain, affecting tens of thousands of people. Scale of destruction is unbelievable. So far, 25,000 homes have been destroyed, and these figures could increase. Floods have affected at least 23 of the country's 31 provinces since heavy downpours began on March 19. The disaster has taken the lives of dozens of people destroying over at least 25,000 homes around the country. And while those who have survived try to save what's left of their belongings, more storms are forecast in the coming days. It has been years since California has experienced a major earthquake. And that has experts wondering, when will this quake drought end? Living in California, it's a topic that Caltech faculty member Michael Minuti is used to talking about. I find it pretty fascinating. Yeah, new research suggests that California may be in an earthquake drought, but experts are saying this calm period will end. But the big question is when? In a study released today, author Glenn Biasi says California is experiencing seismic silence. The next century seems like it needs to be busier. It could be six earthquakes or, or even more. There's no earthquakes in this record. Dr. Angela Chung says the UC Berkeley seismograph has been very quiet with little quake activity. So sometimes there can be stress buildup along a fault. Experts say the Bay Area has been particularly quiet. Since the great earthquake of 1906 destroyed much of San Francisco, there have been only three quakes, magnitude six or higher, including Loma Prieta in 1989.